Hi Pipe Smokers, this is Paul the Pipe Guy live from Rochester, New York and uh, I've been getting a lot of new subscribers lately and uh, <clears throat> I uh, continue to pray for uh, mutton chop and uh, I've had a huge response to that video and uh, he's been watching and uh, it prompted me, uh, and, and this video may not be for everyone. It's not about religion. It is about God and spiritualism. Religion is man's interpretation of the Bible. Uh, true spiritualism is where uh, it's your walk with the Lord. And like I said, this video may not be for everyone so uh, you can watch it and uh, I, it's just not for everyone I, and I'm not here to preach uh, although um, about two and a half years ago I did become an ordained minister um, and uh, anybody can really become an ordained minister if you go online. Um, I looked at a lot of those different sites, uh, but there was one site in particular where um, you had to actually go through about a one-hour application, and it was reviewed by a board uh, of pastors that uh, decided if you were to become an ordained minister or not. So it wasn't a fly-by-night thing, and it was something that I thought long and hard about doing. <clears throat> so uh, I did do that about two and a half years ago. So uh, and, and they asked me uh, a lot of you know different questions that I had to basically give like a you know, one and two page answers to, um, I, uh, was a Mormon priest and, uh, to build up to be a Mormon priest, I won't really get into their whole, um, their whole seminary type of thing or their priesthood, but, um, you, you basically have to go through four years of both homeschooled seminary and uh, also seminary within the church. So uh, there's a lot of memorization of things, a lot of study of things. So it's extremely, extremely involved, and it takes years and years until you become a Mormon priest. And um, so at 16, you are eligible to become a Mormon priest, which... You still can't marry anybody, but you can baptize people. Um, there's, you can serve the sacrament. And uh, so I became a Mormon priest, started my seminary at 12 years old, uh, went through it <clears throat> all four years. I went through uh, three levels of their priesthood, uh, and then I became a priest, uh, which uh, really took a lot of doing um, but, you know, Mormon people are great people. I'm not one anymore. Um, I actually had myself excommunicated. But uh, it, when the Mormon missionaries come over, I, I invite them in and we sit and talk, you know. I uh, don't smoke my pipe around them. Uh, I, I don't enjoy a beer. Uh, but I've had them, they've stopped by and I'm just, come on in. Uh, so basically how I end up, ended up leaving the church and I'm kind of building up to my baptism which is the uh, topic of this video really um, so uh, I was baptized Mormon uh, as a when you become 12 uh, you're eligible to be baptized and I had been a Mormon since birth uh, so <clears throat> uh, at 17 years old, uh, which is basically 39 years ago, uh, a couple of my high school teachers, and I, I don't know if they could even do this nowadays, invited me to a Christian Bible study. So I started going, and it was great. And we were studying about, you know, 
all kinds of things about what God wants for us, about what Jesus wants for us. Um, and uh, the reason why I'm sharing this video is because it seems a lot of my subscribers seem to be Christian, God-fearing, good people. Um, nobody's perfect, but I wanted to share my story with you, uh, kind of my testimony. So I'm, I'm going to these Bible studies. I think it was on a Tuesday night in the Village of Spencerport where I grew up. Not far from where I live today. And uh, so I started talking to uh, my friends in, in, in the Mormon church about what I was learning at these Bible studies and about what God wanted what, wants for us and what Christ wants for us. And um, so it somehow got to the uh, the bishop of that particular uh, church uh, in this area, Mormon church, and uh, he got up one Sunday and said, there's a young man who's going to an independent Christian Bible study, and he's talking to the other youth of the church about what he's learning and about what Jesus Christ wants for our lives, and um, he needs to stop doing that. Instead of following Jesus Christ, we need to follow what our leaders want us to do. And I had a vision instantly of Christ on the cross. The sun was behind him, glaring. He had uh, the thorny um, cap on, uh, thorns on his head, and he had tears rolling down his eyes. And he was nailed to the cross. And uh, I stood up and I left. And uh, I basically walked home. Uh, hitchhiked part of the way, uh, you know, and it was a good 12, 15 miles. And my parents asked me what happened, and I told them, and I says, I'm not going back. And they said, uh, well, you have to. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm 17 years old, and uh, there, uh, I says, I will accept any punishment that uh, you offer me. If you ground me, that's fine. I'll obey everything, you know. Uh, we should obey our parents, but uh, there's somebody above you <laughs> that outranks you that I have to obey. And, and so I ended up writing to the church and having myself excommunicated. And uh, after that, I found a new found freedom because um, Mormonism that's is very strict. It's very regimented. And I'm not talking badly at all about the Mormon church. I think they're wonderful people. It's just God chose a different path for me. And um, I still do believe a lot of the same things that they teach. Uh, some of them I don't. Number one is that they're the only true church. Uh, I don't believe that at all. I think when we die and go to heaven, we're going to see a lot of different denominations there. You know, it doesn't matter. It's your walk with the Lord. Um, so, fast forwarding forward. With this newfound freedom, I uh, moved out when I was 19 years old, and back then the drinking age was 18, and so I started going to bars. I'm going to light up my uh, X109, I think this is Peterson, with some butternut burley in it. So grab your pipe too. Hmm. So, basically for many, many years, after that, even though I got saved, accepted Christ into my heart, I had this newfound freedom somehow. And I went hog wild. Out in the bars, chasing women, fast cars, drugs. Never became a drug addict, thank God, but you know, I experimented. And uh, all kinds of things that God would not like. And uh, so I went hog wild for probably close to 20 years. Still being a believer, just saying, Jesus, take the wheel, but I, I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I learned the hard way. <laughs> So, 
fast forward to about five years ago. Started attending a Baptist church. Had a lot of friends that went there. And uh, a little bird said to me, the Holy Spirit, whatever, uh, you know, the last time you were baptized, you were baptized Mormon. And uh, I said to myself, maybe I should get baptized again uh, in the Christian faith, which uh, I guess Mormons are Christians, but I don't know. I just, I just had that feeling that is, that would be something that I should do. So I talked to my pastor about it. And uh, this is really starting to lead up to the big moment here that I really, what I really wanted to share, um, but I had to kind of fill in the background first. So um, I uh, go into this church and I started taking my son and there were exterior things that said, oh, you, my son at the time was only about nine years old, and, oh, you shouldn't go there, you shouldn't go there, you know, and these were people that should not have been saying that. Uh, but I, the pet, my pastor says, bribe them. And I says, I'll tell you what, Paulie, go to church with me and I'll give you $10. Okay, we go to church. There's an altar call where you go up and repent for your sins. So I, I go up. He stays down there. And uh, back in the seating area. And uh, then I walk back. We leave and he says, Dad, he says, you don't have to give me $10 next week. Just let's go, you know, have something at Tim Hortons or something together afterwards. And I was like, fine. And they have the altar call again, where you go up there and repent for your sins. Which is the reason why Christ died on the cross, is so we don't have to. We can repent and uh, be forgiven. It's erased off the book. Just like you never did it. So this week, so the, the, the next week he followed me, and uh, so I got my eyes closed and I'm praying and I'm asking for forgiveness for some of the things that I, I did in the past. And all of a sudden, I opened something told me to look to my right, and I looked to my right and there's my nine-year-old boy, Pauly Jr. And he's up there and he's kneeling down and he's got his eyes closed, and uh, he says, Dad, he was, he's whispering, what are we doing up here? I says, well, I know what I'm doing. Do you know what you're doing? He's like, no, I just followed you. I says, well, I'm up here saying prayers and asking the Lord to forgive me for some of the things that I did wrong. So, like, maybe if you did something nasty to your sister or, you know, did something wrong this week or in the past, you, you kneel down at the altar and you ask God for to forgive you. Oh, I says, that's called repentance. And he says, okay, so he puts his head back down. And it was wonderful. I had some um, family members that were, that really disrupted that, and I won't get into it, but uh, after that he didn't go to church with me anymore. Uh, which really made me sad. So, in the meantime, uh, I, uh, I'm having meetings with my pastor. I told him um, I wanted to be baptized. And he asked me why. And I says, well, Christ asked us all to be baptized just like he was. And I believe it washes away your sins, all of them. And you get a new beginning. And uh, so he says, okay, before I baptize you, we're going to have a few different meetings. So we, we went through those meetings, and 
he taught me about baptism and the, and the, the meaning of it and um, my meaning was a little bit different than his maybe but I just sat and listened um, agreed with most of what he said and uh, baptism day comes up and I, you know I'm separated from my wife and stuff so none of my family showed up or anything um, I had some friends that were there so I'm wearing a plum colored shirt dark plum and uh, some um, cargo shorts so I I'm pretty nervous you know because I have to go up and talk in front of the entire congregation which is like 300 people out there sharing who I am why I want to be baptized and so forth and I, I did um, I'm, I'm okay at public speaking I guess uh, so comes time to be baptized and I walk out and uh, was hoping the water was warm because it's a whole big baptismal font it's like a big hot tub and I noticed the water was so crystal clear and clean and as I walked down into it, it felt just so warm. And I had taken, at the time, I didn't have prescription glasses, just reading glasses, and I had them hanging on my shirt, which I thought I did. And uh, so we go through the ceremony, and I get dunked. And I come up, and I just rise out of the water. Everybody's applauding. And... Uh, so I hop out, I'm dripping wet, and I just, it was a really great feeling for me. That was my experience. But wait, it gets better, and then we're going to round this video out. Um, so I get all dried off and so forth and change my clothes and go back and sit down, listen to the sermon, and uh, <clears throat> after the sermon, I go to the pastor and I says, Pastor G, I can't find my glasses. I think I might have had them around on my shirt, on my neck, and they may have fallen off in the baptismal font. And he says, well, let's go look. So we went and looked. And here is what blew me away. He uncovers this big baptismal font, which had almost like a hot tub cover on it, and the beautiful, crystal clear water was almost black. Yeah. Um, do you remember when you were a kid in the summertime and so forth, maybe you had a pool or whatever, or went over to a neighbor's pool or whatever, and so you had the little kiddie pool in front of it, so you'd wash the grass and mud off your feet before you'd hop in the pool? That's what that looked like. It was a dark gray color with things in it, almost like small blades of grass or whatever. It was filthy. It was absolutely filthy, and I looked at the, my pastor, and I says, what happened to the water? And he's like, I don't know. I says, I do. I says, the Lord just washed every sin away that I ever committed. And he was just in disbelief. And I came home, and I remember thinking how clean I felt. The, it was just a cleanliness and, a, and an innocence that I had never felt before. And it was a really great feeling. And we can all live blamelessly, meaning you have no blame. All right, If you've done something wrong, it doesn't matter how bad that it is. If you repent, get down on your knees and truly ask the Lord for forgiveness you'll be forgiven. And you can do a blanket. I've done blanket uh, apologies to the Lord for the way I've lived my life at times. And, um, and, and he forgives us. And so that 
is what it means to me to live blamelessly. There's one of my subscribers that needed to hear that. I don't know who it is, but somebody needed to hear this. So that's my story. I had already been baptized by fire. Why not be baptized by the water of life? I'm truly grateful uh, for my beliefs, and my spiritualism, and my love for the Lord. He's, uh, I don't know where I've been without him. Um, and many of you know that my son passed away. Uh, this may all be four years, but many of you don't know, uh, most of you don't know, that um, actually following his death within 18 months, uh, I lost my oldest boy. Um, he hung himself in his garage one night and uh, with 18 within 18 months my my younger brother had passed away from a heart attack my father had died from cancer three generations of Gilsons all within 18 months let me tell you <laughs> that 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 could be a crusher but and it was hard and uh, I just stuck close to my faith and the Lord got me through it so I hope this video didn't kill too many of you I'll probably lose some subscribers but that's okay anyone that can't appreciate this video and you don't want to subscribe that's 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 your business but uh, that that's my uh, that's my story and uh, my strength is my faith in the Lord uh, I'm not perfect oh I'm far from perfect but I do try to live a good life anyways this is Paul the pipe guy live from Rochester New York um, happy pipe smoking pipe smokers and if any of you want to contact me just leave it in the comment section underneath if you want to comment contact me directly um, you can just say hey Paul I'd like to contact you directly and talk about whatever you want to talk about and I'll give you my email address and then you can email me and then I'll give you my phone number you, we can text, email or call and talk uh, whatever whatever you guys need guys and gals need anyways Paul the Pipe Guy, over and out.